Good morning, everybody. I just had a few thoughts that I wanted to share with you. This has been a pretty long month for me. And uh, I had a couple things happen throughout the last month that I thought would be a good topic of conversation for some people. Some people might really need this. I had one individual this last month that really, really needed it. Um, everybody in town, town of Toke, is really, really small, like seriously small. The town population of Toke is smaller than the school that I used to work at down in California before I moved up here. Seriously, the high school I worked at had more kids in it, student body, than the entire town of Toke, Alaska. So moving here was a, a bit of an adjustment still. <laughs> Every now and then I'm not quite sure I've adjusted very well. But um, I, I, for me, um, I found that you get to know people and people get to know you a little bit more. And sometimes it's a good thing, sometimes that's not such a great thing. And, but you can have more of a personal, a personal experience with individuals. And today I wanted to talk to you about, about um, how you can use art as it. Now, anybody that knows me knows that I usually have a sketchbook or at the very least a notebook with me everywhere I go, especially when it comes to going to church. I don't know. I, I used to joke about the fact that my students, uh, their ADD and ADHD was contagious and they gave it to me because I don't remember being this way when I was younger. But the older I get, the more problems I have sitting still, especially when raising little boys. And so I carry a sketchbook with me almost everywhere. And I find a sketchbook is a great way for me to jot down ideas, um, doodle when I'm feeling a, a little too jittery to be able to sit in a pew for a long period of time. That's, that's a problem I have. I have a hard time sitting in church without physically doing something. So I, I sketch and doodle a lot. I mean, I, I even did that in college some. Most of the professors didn't mind that they would be lecturing and me being the nerd would always be in the very front row and I would be listening to their lecture, but I would also be drawing or doodling or popping down ideas um, as I was doing it. I'm a very visual person. Shocking, huh? So I have like literally millions of sketchbooks and stuff. Always. This particular sketchbook, it's hard to see, this is fused glass that I did when I took a glass blowing class. And so I fused glass and then I, I think it was silicone, silicone it on. But if you open this up, this book was specifically for all the notes and ideas I had when I took a glass blowing class. So if you open this thing up, you will see designs of, um, and instructions a lot of the time. Instructions, visual aids of how, with the different temperatures that needed to be for the glass to melt to certain rates, how long you need to anneal it. Different ideas I had that I wanted to put down. Designs of making it easier for me to remember how to use certain equipment. So this book was specifically for when I took that glass class, which I miss being able to do. But I have other sketchbooks. And it's really nice to be able to go back and look at various sketchbooks to see what my design thoughts and processes were at that time, what different stuff I came up with. A lot of the times you can see how you change as a person as well as your artwork changes throughout it. So sometimes it's really, really nice just to go back and have this as your life documentation almost of how far you've come as an individual, and really truly how far you've come as an artist. Uh, that being said, I still have a hard time sitting still. When I sit on the couch watching TV with my kiddos, if I'm not actually having like the computer in front of me doing a bunch of pa uh, paperwork, because my husband and I, you know, we run multiple businesses, I ju just do art. It'd be really, really great if I could just do art. But at this point in time, I need um, 
other areas of revenue. We do a lot of rentals. I own a bread and breakfast. So I have lots of stuff like that. But I still, I'll have supplies next to me if I'm not doing um, paperwork. And I will just quickly start painting an idea that I'd like to maybe uh, expand upon later on canvas, but don't have the time or energy to do it at that specific point in time. Like right now, the studio is in the basement of the B&B. It's a wreck down here. We have done a lot to get this place uh, renovated and we're just gonna take a lot more to get it finished. But I'm using it the way I can right now. So you'll see a lot of my sketches and stuff. I actually, this one, um, I've done a few paintings with this, with the groups of students and stuff explain to them the process. This one I just did quickly with uh, watercolor pencils. So I got the thought down and I was able to work with kids on actual canvases later on. But now I can go back and I can reference ideas that I had. And I have a lot of these. Um, I also have a lot of projects where I, as an art teacher wasn't really familiar with that lesson and I wanted to get better and better at it. So I used the sketchbooks to see exactly how I could improve that skill. So this one was a blind line contour drawing, which meant that I was not allowed to look at the picture or the, the paper as I was drawing. You looked only at the hand and you had to figure out how to make your eyes and your hands work together, but separately by not being able to see it. So it's really interesting to go back and see how much I have improved and how much um, I veered away from certain aspects. And it's really, really interesting to go back and see how many projects I start and I never finish because uh, life as a mom, it's really hard. And I have incorporated this sketchbook design and the whole concept of carrying sketchbooks around and using them for all forms of communication for myself. Um, it's kind of hard to see this one. This one incorporated, included cutting out different papers that could be um, glued in, just so then added to um, different things you can add to the front. This was an art journal I did when I was in college. I think I started this one. It was one of those where I go to an old used bookstore and I find books that uh, the cover itself was nice and thick. It had, there's just some quality to that particular book and maybe some of the images inside that just spoke to me that I could see myself incorporating my own designs into it in some form or fashion. We'll have to go over that a different way. But my kids, and anybody that knows me knows I do this with the kids. I always have extra notebooks on hand, okay? Multiple times a year, I will stock up, especially if there's a good sale. And my kids each have their own multiple notebooks. So we go to church. A lot of the times they'll bring their notebook. They have a hard time uh, sitting still. My little boys in that age, it's hard for anybody to sit still. And they will draw. They will come up with different designs. They will watch what mommy's doing and they will try to do it. And my middle child, Noah, is getting pretty darn good. Every time he comes up with a great and brilliant idea, I emphasize to him how much he needs to write that idea down, diagram it, come up with labels for each different aspect of it. And most of the time it's pretty interesting and very funny because he's a boy, like all the way. It's hard to see this, but he, uh, most of his sketchbook is diagrams of different weapons and stuff that he would like to at some point in time create. Anybody that knows Noah knows that he is a very sensitive child and like super, super sweet. So it's a, uh, it's an interesting shift in his personality to see all of these uh, 
battle ready boats and weapons of mass destruction and how he has them all labeled with the different things so, so that anybody walking in can see exactly that this right here this is the watchtower of the boat and these are the guns and various windows and all these things and he's done that throughout his sketchbook and on this one he decided he was going to create a game of some sort and he was writing out all the different aspects of uh, the instructions to the game. But then this last Sabbath, I find it, he brought his sketchbook because he saw me grab mine and shove mine in my purse. And he'd been watching me do a few different sketches recently. And a lot of my paintings and artwork have a landscape thing to them. And so he decided to create his own. And I thought it was just really cool. He's got the mountains, he's got a tree with the different branches. He even has down here, it's hard to see because he did it in lightly in pencil, uh, the reflection of the mountains in a lake. So I thought that was just the cutest, coolest thing ever. He's, a, he's gonna be teaching art lessons soon. Now these are all great ways to show how different designs, when I come up with an idea, I sketched it out so that I can refer back to it. But at the same time, there is a different aspect to art. And this is what got me thinking earlier. Actually, this, this last week. Now, throughout the years, I have people message me, come up to me, talk to me, want me to give them ideas for stuff. I have people... Uh, frequently message me a lot of the time about pottery or ask me personally about different things which I think is great I have no problem with people coming up to me and picking my brain when it comes to art um, but there's a different side of art that uh, when you walk into a museum and you look at the painting on the wall you might not even think of it in these terms but art for a lot of people is very therapeutic that's why they have what we call art therapy and a lot of people need this um, myself included uh, art has been a medium for me to be able to deal with various things that have happened throughout my life different time periods where I physically and emotionally could not handle what was happening in my life or um, people in my life and uh, so I use art as a form of cathartic release. And so you'll get uh, different projects and stuff that take on a whole new meaning. And most people, when they think of this kind of stuff, will think of, you know, like Van Gogh and his mental issues. But there's other, there are other things here. Like this, this work I did. I did it in a sketchbook. It's just flowers. And the average individual that flipped through this sketchbook wouldn't think twice about it. But this piece, and, and I just happened to come across this this week, was my cathartic release for how to deal with the Sandy Hook shooting at a school. And each one of these flowers represented an individual that lost their life. And it's hard, it is really, really hard. But for me, this is how I dealt with it. This last month, I had a sweet individual come up to me and uh, asked me to, uh, that she, they needed to speak in private. And when somebody says they need to speak in private and we're surrounded by people, I usually pay attention, like serious attention to that kind of stuff because that's not something that somebody just normally goes up to you and says, I need to speak to you in private. It usually means there's something going on in their life and they need somebody that they can trust and feel comfortable around. This individual, I, and I was praying, trying to find a place that we could speak quietly and privately without a million eyes around us. So of course, as I'm leaving the crowded area, I, I'm praying, okay, dear Lord, please, please help me with this. 
get out to a private area and uh, the first thing I always ask is everything okay at home? Is this about you physically having issues or is this something that you're having emotional problems at home that you're having a hard time dealing with? Because anybody that's worked in the school system knows there are so many different backgrounds that kids come from and a lot of the time school is the only place they feel safe. I understand that and I'm very much aware of how that affects students and uh, their ability in the classroom. And uh, this individual told me it, there was nothing at home going on but uh, they were having physically they weren't sure what was going on. Uh, their hands were shaking they were having a problem breathing and she didn't understand what was happening to her. And I had noticed uh, throughout the morning previous to this that uh, she seemed really upset, which was abnormal for her. So she's, she's speaking to me and I'm like, sweetheart, darling, you're having a panic attack. You are so stressed out by the academics of everything. You're having a panic attack. And this must have been the first time for her. Um, I've been through panic attacks. Um, I had a pretty crummy teenage years. And so I felt this, I felt this. I really, really felt this. And I was able to relate to her on multiple levels. And I started talking to her, you know, first we gotta breathe. First thing you do is just relax your body as much as possible. Breathe in, breathe out, calm yourself before you start hyperventilating. First things first. And then um, I start telling her about some of the issues I had in high school. And, uh, family issues. And I'm like, I understand exactly how you feel. You're okay. Breathe in, breathe out. What we're going to do is we have to find coping mechanisms for you. When I was in high school and a teenager, I had two major coping mechanisms. And uh, I still use music. Music was my, my big go-to. And so whenever I'm feeling really anxious and stuff, it's not uncommon for me to put earbuds in and uh, back in the younger days it was blast the eagles i would listen to the eagles as loud as i could handle it and there was something about it and it just relaxed me um i also used to ride a horse that probably was not the greatest thing for me to be doing when um i was stressed and anxious because Come on, I was high school, I was stupid. I was uh, not really caring about my own safety and I used to do some stupid stuff on a horse. But then as I grew up more, I found art as an amazing form of therapy. I would get on a pottery wheel and um, the world would melt away. It would all be about the feeling of the clay through your fingers and you get on there and it's not, hey, I'm going to build a, a bowl or a vase and it's gonna look exactly like this. You don't do it that way. You get on there and you just, you breathe, you relax and you become one with the clay and nothing else seems to matter. Uh, painting, painting's the same way. You see this particular piece, this obviously was done uh, with purpose. There's a uh, rhyme and reason to everything. But when you're having um, anxiety attacks and you're having a really, really hard situation that you're working through, this is not what my paintings look like when I'm uh, A few people, very, very few people, like two, maybe three people have ever seen uh, some of my work that I've done when I was seriously upset because it brings out a completely different personality it's all of those emotions that you feel are just, they spew out of you and onto a canvas. And it's, it's this massive release of tension and energy and thoughts and feelings that you don't even know where it comes from half the time. And then when you're done and your, your body is just completely spent, you take a big step back and you look at that painting and you're like holy crap what just happened 
because it's usually nothing like you. It's not the person that you show people. It's not the artwork that you normally put on display. In college, um, the relationship I was in was not a good relationship. He was uh, abusive. He uh, highly controlling. And uh, one day, and, and we weren't living together at that point uh, for the most part. I was more of long distance and uh, he'd called me and upset, just being very abusive over the phone. And it was just before I was supposed to go to a painting class. It was a life painting class where uh, you go in and uh, you're supposed to paint the model. Just you're, it's more realism based. You're supposed to paint the, uh, the individual just as you see them. Make sure your proportions are correct. I was so upset when I went to that. That particular session became a massive cathartic release for me. And it was weird because um, I had, I was a bit of a feminist and uh, as my husband now would tell you, I uh, had liberal tendencies. Thank you, uh, California State College University for that. So I had, I had some odd magazines and that had like the B words throughout the magazine and it was supposed to be take back the name and don't let it be used against you. Well, I had taken that magazine with me and I cut out the words and uh, this is the first time ever. My painting was like dark, like seriously dark. I had purposely um, positioned my painting easel so that the back of the model was to me. So you couldn't see their face. You couldn't see any frontal aspects of this individual. And my background on my painting was like seriously dark, black, grays. The individual in this painting, um, it, was, it was very monochromatic. The individual was gray. And I had taken chains. I had added um, the visual of chains, like a ball and chain. And I had inserted the words from this magazine inlaid throughout the piece. So like where the, the individual's head was, I had inserted like small mines and I had uh, added different cutouts from this magazine, the B word on the ball. And it's just like, it was black and gray with the uh, highlights of red thrown in. And towards the end of the class, every single student in that class had stopped everything that they were doing and they were all crowded around me and my painting because I was just, I wasn't stopping. I wasn't thinking. I was just purging my emotions in the only way that I knew I could safely do it. And they were all shocked because they saw a completely different side of me. And that's not something I ever show. And it was really interesting, their take on it and how different it was and how it was like a complete, if you put it next to most of my other artwork, you would have never in a million years guessed that was actually my work. So to you out there, I highly encourage you. And if you're raising small children or big children, um, stop and think about the different ways a sketchbook in art can relate to your world around you and how it could possibly help you deal with stuff. It can help your kids in many ways. I mean, my kids, they come up with brilliant ideas. They mark it down. They label it. They can look back at it. I can look back at their work and see how their minds have worked throughout the years. And I can go back and look at my artwork and see the different ideas and projects I've come up with throughout the years. But more importantly, um, some of it I can look back and say, wow, that was a really rough time in my life. But because of that, my ability to uh, release myself um, through my artwork, I worked through it and I am so much stronger now than I was. I've got my abilities to uh, associate one aspect of my life in that regard 
and move on because I have found ways to make that work for me and make me a stronger person because of it. So just some thoughts for you guys on this uh, rather early Tuesday morning. All right, I've got a conference call that I'm supposed to take part in. So I'm going to let everybody go. I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful Tuesday, and I will see you later. Thanks.